I kind of want to mark this day on my calendar because it's it's an odd day for me. What it do, YouTube? It's your boy, Black Freckles. Today was the day that I, I came to the realization that I'm a terrible person. <laughs> it's crazy because what made me realize that I'm a terrible person? Like I'm the same person that I've always been and I feel about myself how I've always felt, but I'm a person that's a self-evaluator. So I'm gonna tell y'all a couple of stories and I'm gonna tell y'all how I got to this point. And maybe I could help someone else or more importantly, when you're a terrible person, you really just focus on yourself. Maybe I can get some help, you feel me? So. If I was gonna explain it from scratch, it would be hard, but I'm gonna try. The reason that I feel like I'm a terrible person is because I don't give a fuck about anything. And I used to always say, I don't give a fuck about most things, I don't give a fuck about this, and I don't give a fuck about that. But in its, in its core, I don't give a fuck about anything, and it's, impossible for me to give a fuck about anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get straight into a story, okay? I'm gonna tell you a revelation that I had that made me think, see, I do give a fuck about things. See, I'm not a terrible person. And this happened to me in November of 2018. It was a revelation that made me think I'm not a terrible person, but it showed me that I, I am a terrible person. And when I say I'm a terrible person, I mean it from a societal standpoint. And the fact that I don't agree with it, to me, is part of what makes me a terrible person. All right, in November of 2018, my brother did something. It made me proud of myself because I said, wow, I actually love my brother. Now clearly, figuring out that you um, actually love your brother that you grew up with shouldn't be a revelation like on some i feel human y'all ever watch dexter and on the first episode he basically talk about he almost acts as far as emotions go where he try to do or say what he think other people would do or say in that moment i feel like that but i don't ever do or say what they would do in that moment because i don't give a fuck like i'm not a serial killer like dexter's a serial killer so that nigga probably need to blend in and shit right it was my brother's birthday, right? Let's start from the beginning. I love to go to Las Vegas. It's my favorite place I've ever been. I love to gamble. I love the lights. I love everything about going to Vegas. I'm going to Vegas in 29 days. Shout out to my dog, Mal. All right? So I'm going to Vegas for the first time ever, right? Probably, probably like four or five years ago, right? I don't get to see my family much because I live in a different state. So I thought, what better thing to do? Because I like to go for my birthday. This time I'm not going for my birthday because I was supposed to go on a cruise with my family. I ended up not going. So I, I skipped Vegas to go on a cruise. But I ended up not going. So I said, well, fuck it. If I'm not going to go on a cruise, we're going to go to Vegas. All right? So I invited my nephew. Me and my nephew super tight. He ain't come. And I invited my half-brother and my brother. All right? So, my half brother is the coolest nigga of all time. Like he just he he's just too fucking cool. You feel what I'm saying? So he down from jump. He got a good wife. His wife makes sure that he ready and planning and all that. And I'm not saying my other brother don't have a good wife. Me and his wife grew up together. She's like, I want to say she's like family to me because she is right. So anyway, we all planning to go to Vegas, right? So. Probably about two or three days before we go to Vegas, my brother hit me up and he said, hey, bro, I'm sorry, my G, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to be able to make it, right? And he tells me this after I've, like, gone the extra mile to make sure that we got, like, shit set up. You know what I'm saying? I paid, right? If something come up and you can't go to Vegas and you tell me last minute, for most people, I would be cool with it. But for my brother, I'm not gonna be cool with it. And the reason that I'm not gonna be cool with it is because my brother don't keep his word. 
And to me, not keeping your word is cool. I'm not even going to front. Not keeping your word is cool. All right. But not keeping your word to me is not cool if you know me. Because for starters, if you didn't want to come to Vegas, you could have just been like, oh, nah, bro, I don't want to go. And I'd have been like, all right, cool. When my nephew said he didn't want to go, I was like, I went like, nigga, it's my birthday. What? Okay, cool. I don't give a fuck. I want you to come, but I'm going to respect if you don't want to come, right? So the nigga tried to cancel at the last minute, right? Now, my brother know me, okay? I don't give a fuck who the fuck you are. If you do or say something to me that I don't like, I will never speak to you ever again. Every single time. You could be my mother. You could be my father. You could be my best friend. You could be my bitch. I will stop talking to anybody in the whole world. And that's where I start to think that I'm a terrible person based on societal standards. And then when I give you my rebuttal, I'm going to say, see, I really am. So the nigga tried to cancel at the last minute, right? And he gave me some bullshit ass excuse like, man, it's crazy being an adult. Nigga, you 10 years older than me. I'm not trying to hear this shit, okay? So at that point, I didn't say nothing. I didn't do nothing. I just started talking to my head brother like, hey man, we're gonna get it in. We're gonna have a fucking ball. We're gonna do what we do, right? At that point, I knew I was never gonna speak to my brother ever again. I knew it, okay? Me, him, and my half-brother, we all in a group chat together, okay? He would say stuff in the group chat, and I wouldn't even respond. And if my other brother said something in the group chat, I would respond. And it's not, I'm not going to leave the group chat. I'm not going to make a thing out of it. You feel what I'm saying? If, or if my brother miraculously said something that just tickled my fancy, I'd respond, Okay? But I knew then I was never going to talk to this nigga ever again, right? So my brother knows me. And my brother knows that he's not kept his word to me before. And my brother also knows that I don't give a fuck. And I will stop talking to anybody. Okay? So my brother, was, he waited till the last minute. And he said, hey man, I worked some shit out, bro. I'm going to go ahead and make the Vegas trip. So this pisses me off even more. Because it lets me know that you could have came to start with. You feel what I'm saying? I had the rental car and shit. And my brothers landed before I did. They coming from Texas. I'm coming from Florida. My trip way longer. Right? So they landed before I did. And they went and picked up the rental car and shit. Right? So they come and pick me up. Now mind you. I live a thousand miles away from my brothers. I'm lucky if I see these niggas every year. So I seen these niggas. And I was happy. I I, I want to be pissed, right? But I, I'm, I'm not pissed because I'm happy to see this nigga. You feel what I'm saying? And at that time, I wasn't thinking like, oh, I just love that nigga. You know what I'm saying? But I know him very well. We going to have a fucking good time, right? It was my first time in Vegas. I'm not going to let you fuck up my birthday and my trip, nigga. So fuck it. We going to kick it. We had a motherfucking ball in Vegas. Like, a ball. If y'all listen to the podcast, people who listen to the podcast, shout out to my nigga Rebel. Shout out to the Raw Hype. Y'all know that I had a blast in Vegas. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I bet $1,000 on black. On, on roulette. Put $1,000 on black and won. Come on, man. I don't have $1,000 to put on black. I genuinely don't give a fuck. I'm here to have a ball. You feel what I'm saying? My brother really the one that put me up on gambling when I lived with him in New Orleans. He used to take me to the casino and give me his rent money like, nigga, turn us into something. You feel me? So, we had a motherfucking ball in Vegas, right? So, at that point, I'm like, man, I had so much motherfucking fun, man. All is forgiven, right? Now, my brother know that he was on thin ice with me. So, my brother, like, kept his word on and on and on and on. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I text my brother right now, that nigga's on vacation. He was in Puerto Rico last time I talked to him. So you know you need money on vacation. If I text my brother right now and say, hey, bro, I need $300. That nigga wouldn't bat an eye. He wouldn't say what the fuck you needed for. He would send me $300. And to me, money talk. Money talk. So let's say you got a homeboy, right? 
and you let that nigga borrow a hundred dollars. It's some niggas that'll stop being your homeboy in exchange for not having to give you back that hundred dollars. So that's an example of how money talk. Okay. All right. So anyway, me and my brother, we go on, we kicking it. We, we cool. He come and visit a nigga more than, more than like he ever visited. You know what I'm saying? He came and visit a nigga. Like this is my nigga, right? But that takes me back to November of 2018. All right. Now I'm a Jacksonville Jaguars season ticket holder. The year before last, there was 10 minutes left in the game, in the AFC Championship game to go to the Super Bowl. The Jaguars were up by 10 points against the Patriots, and they lost. The you see how I said that, man? The next year, I get season tickets again. The Jags are playing like shit. They lost eight games in a row, okay? But I had told my brother, I said, for your birthday in November, I want to take you to the Pittsburgh Steelers game because they playing the Jaguars, all right? So everybody get together. We come to Jacksonville, and we're going we gonna to watch the Jaguars play the Steelers. I know how my brother is because he guaranteed me that he would come, but I know that my brother word is shaky, so I don't, I don't act on it. Like, he in Puerto Rico right now, if I would have known for sure that he was going to go on this trip, I would have went. But my brother word is shaky. So I never move on his word. About three, four days before the game, my brother texts me. He say, nigga, you going to be ready for this weekend? Right? The Jaguars had lost eight games in a row. So I had stopped paying for my season tickets because I didn't want to go to the fucking game. But I had called my dude that do the season tickets and had him change this specific game because I was going to take him to the game for his birthday and two other people. So I asked my nephew, I asked his wife, I asked everybody, you know, who want to go? He was coming by himself. So my, uh, my homeboy named A9, he had did a huge favor for me. Like I owe this nigga to this day. But I said, what I do is I take him and, him and his wife, you feel me? And, uh, and my brother, right? Cause I had my ticket plus three more tickets, right? Nah, I'm lying. I had my ticket plus two more tickets, right? So I was going to take my boy A9 and I was gonna take my brother, right? So my brother hit me up like three or four days before, and he said, nigga, you gonna be ready for the game this weekend, nigga? I said, man, hell yeah. And the reason that I said, hell yeah, even though I knew I had stopped paying for my tickets, and my tickets were no longer valid, but I hadn't heard from my brother, so I didn't believe that he was coming, right? So I was like, fuck it. I ain't finna pay for this shit, right? Well, anyway, I, um. I say, hell yeah, nigga. And the reason I tell him hell yeah is because I gave him my word that I was going to take him to this game for his birthday. And if he going to come out here, I'm going to take him to the game, right? Okay. So I said, okay. So I called my dude about my season ticket. I said, man, I need to make a payment. I need to get all my tickets reactivated. I'm about to start going back to the games, blah, 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 blah. He's like, all right, cool, right? So for me, to, for me to get those tickets for the Steelers game, I had to pay for my season tickets for the rest of the year. So I had to pay almost $600 to get all these tickets to games that I don't even want to go to so I can keep my word to my brother to take him to this game, right? Well, right on schedule, right when it was time for the game, my brother said, hey, man, I can't make it, bro. I got this going on. I got that going on. And I say, see, this nigga be pissing me the fuck off because this type of corny shit is, is, not, is not necessary. Just tell me you don't want to go. You feel me? But the reason that my brother do it is because my brother has a good heart. The nigga means well. So he tell everybody yes, but then life happens and he can't keep through, he can't keep his word. But me, I'm a thinking nigga. So I'm going to tell you up front. I'm going to say, man, I don't know, bro. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know when I know something. That's it. You feel what I'm saying? That's it. But my brother want to people please, right? So my brother canceled on me last minute. So for the rest of that year, I had to go to Jags games that I didn't want to go to. And then I ended up taking my dog, a and his wife to the game because I had owed them for a favor that they did for me. So I took them to the game. We had a fucking ball. We had a fucking ball. D.D. Westbrook better than Antonio Brown. D.D. better than him. D.D. Westbrook better than Antonio Brown. Yeah, you heard it. D.D. Westbrook better than Antonio. Yeah, I know something wrong. D.D. Westbrook.
he's better than Antonio. How much he was drinking? Did he West a lot? A lot? A lot? Did he Westbrook better than Antonio? Cause we gonna put 20 on Antonio. We gonna put 20 on Antonio. It, it don't matter if he on it. Yeah, Antonio. we gonna put 20 on. What they gonna do? We gonna put 20 on it. Then he does. <laughs> All right, I showed out. We had a ball. Okay. But this is how I learned that I love my brother. I didn't say nothing to that nigga about it, and I kept talking to him. And I knew that that was against every every one of my principles because I don't give a fuck who the fuck you are. I will stop talking to you. All right? Like, I hardly talk to my sister, and it's for the same reasons. Like, you do and you say things that convince me that you don't give a fuck about me. And even if you do, you've convinced me that you don't. So I don't give a fuck. You feel me? So my thing is... The reason that I have come to this realization that I'm a terrible person is because I don't give a fuck about anything and I think that I'm right for it. I don't give a fuck about anything and I think that I'm right for it. Like, I, I don't feel that I had great parents and I have a tattoo of my mother on my back from like 2011. She died in 2011. I think I got my tattoo in 2012. And it took me to be a parent myself before I realized that my mother didn't do as good as job as I thought she did. You feel me? And my father was a piece of shit and a terrible parent. Like he's a terrible, he, put it like this. He called me on my birthday, like this past birthday. And I thought to myself, who told this nigga it was my birthday? You know what I'm saying? But my parents were married until my pops died. I mean, my, my mother, <laughs> I will hear wishful thinking, right? They were married until my mom died, okay? So it's not like I didn't grow up with a father. He's just a shitty father. Which makes me say, how good was my mother as a mother if I grew up with this nigga as my father? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I came to the realization when I understood that I don't give a fuck about nothing and I still think that I'm right, and it's because I don't see the alternative. When I see people that are regular people and they care about everything, I think that they're stupid. And for me, I justify how I am and how I act because I'm honest. If you go watch my video for Father's Day, it's me and my daughter, right? And my daughter say on the video, I say, describe your father. And she says, you're funny, you don't really care about anything. I said, well, tell me something that I care about. She said, me and yourself. And she couldn't think of nothing else. Now, the reason that she knows that is because I'm honest. On a grand scale, I don't give a fuck about nobody except for me and my daughter, right? Now, the reason that other people think that's terrible is because they feel like they give a fuck about me, right? But there's a lot of people who have shown me that they don't give a fuck about me, and therefore I don't give a fuck about them. Now, I could smoke a blunt with somebody that don't give a fuck about me. I could drink a drink with somebody that don't give a fuck about me. I can play Madden with somebody that don't give a fuck about me. I could fuck a bitch that don't give a fuck about me. But I'm never gonna give a fuck about people that don't give a fuck about me. Now, there are other people that I care about besides my daughter. Like, for example, my best friend, Rebel. We do our podcast together, right? Now, I know I love Rebel, and I know I give a fuck about Rebel, okay? But I know for sure that Rebel could do something to make me not fuck with him no more. I know for sure that he could. And the crazy shit about it is, again, I always feel that I'm right. And I feel that I'm right because I openly will tell anybody that I don't give a fuck about nobody except for me and my daughter. Now, my nephew, I, I helped raise my nephew. He's the person that I don't know yet. Him and my daughter, they're the people that I don't know yet if I could live without them. But everybody else, I'm for sure that I can live without them. I choose to, to stick with my brother because I love him, that nigga. He funny. <laughs> he, I, I can, I, 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 he'll give me anything that I need. And it's because he know that I do the same. 
You feel what I'm saying? Like I enjoy my brother. You know what I'm saying? So that's my point of the story that I just told is that I didn't I didn't even bother that nigga about that shit. Because it made me say, I love this nigga, man. Cause I'm not even gonna bother him about it and I'm not gonna stop talking to him. Because I know I would have stopped talking to anybody else. So I've learned at this point that the only thing that'll make me stop talking to somebody that I care about or somebody that I love is if they don't want me to. So if you tell me, hey, nigga, I wish you was dead, I'm totally fine with never speaking to you again. If you tell me I don't enjoy being around you, I'm totally fine with never speaking to you again. And to everybody, this makes me a terrible person because I don't give a fuck about nobody. And the reason that I don't give a fuck about nobody is because everybody is flawed. And I'm not going to give you the power to hurt me. I'm not going to give you the power to fuck up my day. I didn't sleep for one second last night because a person that I actually love and give a fuck about fucked up my day. So I've been up since whatever the fuck today is. I've been up since two days before this. And I don't want that power to be in more, more people than one or two. And if that makes you feel that I'm a terrible person, I do not give a fuck at all and the difference between me and everybody else and this is what makes me a terrible person is because the right thing to do is to pretend like you give a fuck about people that you don't give a fuck about like when i tell you my story i say oh, my mom died in 2011. if you subscribe to my channel because you like my reaction videos you don't give a fuck about that and you shouldn't. <laughs> you don't know her and you barely know me. To me, I feel like it's totally natural and totally fine to not give a fuck about some shit that don't pertain to you. My best quality is my worst quality. Like if you're my friend and you don't talk to me for three months, I'm not going to be mad at you about it because I don't give a fuck. So when you hit me up and you say, hey, man, I want to come out there to Florida and I want to stay with you and chill and do shit. I'm going to say, of course you can. You my nigga. You my dog. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm mad because you ain't talked to me for three months. I don't give a fuck that you didn't talk to me for three months. Why would I give a fuck? And it's because you didn't want to talk to me for three months. I can respect that. And the problem is when I don't give a fuck and I tell people I don't give a fuck, they can't respect that. And it, it makes me sad because I'm happy with who I am. My unhappiness comes from everybody else. That I have to interact with everybody else. And I have to be told that I'm wrong for not giving a fuck about people who have either one, convinced me that they don't give a fuck about me, or two, they just not somebody that's interesting enough or intriguing enough for me to give a fuck about. That's not a crime. Because most people don't give a fuck about other people, but the game is that they take the time to pretend like they give a fuck about other people. And I'm not going to do it because it's, it's, it's disingenuous. I don't want you to think that I give a fuck about you if I don't. I can't have no pride in that. I can't. I can't have no pride in that. And I won't. And I won't let people convince me that I should be doing that. That I should care that is Thanksgiving that I should care that it's Valentine's Day, that I should care that the NBA awards are on. I don't give a fuck about this shit. If you're my bitch and I want to buy you something, I'm not finna wait till motherfucking February. I'm gonna buy it when I want to buy it. If I watch the whole NBA season and you got busy, I don't need to follow you on Instagram to see what the fuck you're doing in the off season. I don't give a fuck what you're doing in the off season. I don't follow no celebrities on shit because I don't give a fuck what they doing. And there are people that I'm a fan of. Like, I'm a huge fan of Kobe Bryant. I'm a huge fan of Jalen Ramsey. And, and so on and so forth. But I don't give a fuck what you niggas doing, man. And, 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 and everybody want to try to convince me that I'm wrong for that. That, I, that I'm a fuck nigga for that. You feel what I'm saying? And that's how I'm always going to be. I feel pain in my heart because I'm not who everybody else want me to be. But you want me to be that for your happiness. And for your enjoyment, it's not that you give a fuck about me. Because if you gave a fuck about me, you wouldn't be asking me to do it because you know I don't fucking want to do it. I don't like my assistant manager at my job, right? When he talked to me, he talked to me like a real ass nigga. And I like this nigga. 
he's like a person that's like a nice guy that's like everyone else, but he understand the shit that I be saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll give you a great example, right? His wife is a genius. She cool. She's beautiful. She dope, right? But one day we at work, right? And he tell me my wife want to adopt two cats. So she called him and asked him, can she adopt two cats? He said, hell no, you can adopt zero cats. And she brings home five, right? And he complained about it a little bit, but you know, that's it. But when he talked about his wife, he said, nigga, my life wouldn't be this great if it wasn't for my wife. My wife, the best thing that ever happened to me, right? And I respect that because that's his wishes. I'm never going to shit on your wishes because of my beliefs. I respect that. And I love his wife. She dope. You feel what I'm saying? But if I was married to a bitch and she asked me, could she get two cats? And I said she can get zero and she brought home five. I'm going to get a divorce. Because I'm not going to deal with this shit. I don't think he a bitch. I don't think he a pussy. I don't think he a lame nigga. I just think he doing some shit that I can't do. So I'm not going to tell people that I can do it. So when I tell you that I can't do it and I tell you that I don't want to do it. And you still expect it of me. I hate that I hurt you. I hate that I put you in pain and I hate that I let you down. But also, I don't give a fuck about none of those things because I never, I know I never created the illusion that I'm this person that you're trying to make me out to be. But when he talked to me at work, he always tell me, he said, I feel like you give him about 40% at work, right? And he's like, but I'm never mad at you because you usually always top three in sales. So he was like, there's people here who giving it 100%, but you beat them in sales every month. So I ain't going to shit on you for it. But just know that I know that you're giving 40%. And the reason that I'm giving 40% is because I don't give a fuck about this job. And I like my job, but I don't give a fuck about it because I understand these people making billions of dollars and I'm making change and, and I get it. That's the way the system works. It is what it is. But I don't give a fuck about this shit because they don't give a fuck about me. If every fucking customer that walked into my place of business tomorrow quit, I mean, quit being a customer and everybody that works there quit, my Fortune 500 company is not going to bat an eye. And I'm fine with that. But I just need other people to be fine with me saying, I don't give a fuck about this job. And if my 40% can mean I can do this job as good as anyone else here, that's what you're going to get. And it's because I don't give a fuck about this. So if not giving a fuck about anything makes me a bad person, I don't care. If I have 100 fucks to give and I give one fuck to 100 people, did I really help them? But if I have 100 fucks to give and I give 90 to my daughter, I keep five for myself and I give five to other people, they actually going to feel that. And that's why I feel how I feel. And that's why I don't give a fuck. And that's why I'm fine with being a motherfucking terrible person. All right, man. I got somewhere to go. So I have to wrap this video. But in closing, and I know this was a long ass video, but I didn't even cover everything. In closing, I've just found it in my journey impossible to give a fuck about most things because most people don't give a fuck about most things. They're just willing to play a game that I'm not willing to play. Like another good example would be if someone accuses me of doing something that I don't do or I didn't do, I'm not going to take the time to correct them. Like my boy always say this about his old lady. He say, she know not to ever ask me when I'm coming home because I'm not going to answer her. Like, I'm not a dog. I'll be home when I get home. And whatever you think that I'm out doing, do whatever it is you would do if I'm doing that, if it means that much to you. That's exactly how I feel. Like, it was this cornball dude in my job that was in love with some chick for like two or three years now. And for some odd reason, he thought I was fucking with her. And I knew that he thought this, but I let him go all these years thinking it without ever correcting it because I don't give a fuck if he thinks that I'm fucking her. I don't care. So it can stress you out, but I'm not going to take the time to be the nice guy and say, hey, just so you know, bro, there's nothing going on between us. Fuck you and fuck her. So my thing is, I don't take the time to correct things when they're wrong which to some people makes me a terrible person, but I don't care. Like if I was in court, 
and I didn't do something, I would definitely go out of my way to prove that I didn't do something. If I'm in regular everyday life and I didn't do something, I'm not going to prove it. I'm not going to prove. Like, I've I've gotten disciplined at my job for something before that I didn't even do. And I didn't even say, hey, I wasn't the one that did it because I didn't care about, like, the punishment. The punishment might be just a talking to or something. So it's not really worth me, like, doing nothing or trying to deflect it because it's like, I don't give a fuck either way, you know? But I'm ending this by saying I get and I understand that by societal standards, I'm a terrible person, but society wants me to take on burdens that aren't mine. You know, it's like when I go and get a sandwich and they say, would you like to donate a dollar to the children? No. Why would I want to do that? That's burden isn't mine. And the reason that that burden isn't mine is because there will be times that come in my own daughter's life where I don't have the money to do something that I need or want to do. That burden is mine. So it's essentially irresponsible for me to give away dollars when I'm going to need futuristic dollars for my own child. And my own child is what makes me feel human. But she's also what makes me feel not human sometimes. Like I feel human because I have a, a, a undying love for her. Right. But I also feel like I'm not a human because if she ever told me, I don't want you in my life, or if she ever told me, just, hey, leave me the fuck alone, I feel like I could mentally do that. And the reason that I feel like I could mentally do that is because it's at her request. If somebody, no matter how much I like them or love them or whatever, tells me that they don't want to fuck with me, I can move on out of respect for their wishes. And again, this also makes me a terrible person because anytime you actually listen to what someone says and you believe them, it makes you a terrible person because people just say things. They don't mean what they say. And a lot of times people say things to get a reaction out of other people. And I don't do that. I just mean what I say. And I'm so consistent with what I say that I'm offended when you think outside of what I say. But it's normal to just say things. So it's normal to tell somebody, I don't fucks with you because you want to control them. It's like that boyfriend that says, I'll kill myself if you ever leave me. He's not. And he's corny. And he's just trying to control you. So for me, I don't really give a fuck about nothing that anybody says because it's not real. But I know the things that I say are genuine. So it's hard for me to decipher. It's like when people say, Everybody doesn't have a good heart just because you do. And for me, it's like everybody's not real just because I am. And I can only be real to a certain extent because real is viewed as being a terrible person. Right. So that's really all I got on this subject, because your way has constant pain. Like if people believed their way. Like they say they do, they would be in constant pain. Like if I cared about any woman or every woman I had ever met in my life, like she wanted me to, I would be in constant pain. I would be, I would have constant heartache. Just even simple as like, if people took like prayer literal and they legitimately really thought something was going to happen when they prayed, they would be in constant pain. Everything that people say that they believe in, they really don't believe in it. And then when I don't believe in what I say I don't believe in, it makes me an asshole. So as far as everybody that's in my life that I involve in my life, I do love them. I do have love for them. But the reason that I can say that I don't give a fuck about them 
is because I know that I can live without them. But essentially, anybody could live without anyone. Because anyone in the world could die and the world don't stop. If the CEO of your job dies an hour before your shift starts, you're still going to have to go to work. Nobody is important enough to give a fuck about. So to quote Cersei Lannister, the only people that you should love are your children.